I mean, when I first saw it, it did really did just look like my whole kitchen was on fire. It's important to understand the risks to human health in addition to the grave concerns about gas stoves emitting some of the most potent greenhouse gases. To help people understand how gas stoves negatively impact the indoor air quality of our homes, we used two pieces of technology. First, we used a Flow 2 air quality monitor, which can quantify some of the key air pollutants from the use of gas stoves. Second, we used a forward-looking infrared camera, also known as a GF320 FLIR, which can visualize natural gas, also known as methane, as well as some of the air pollutants produced by burning it. We can't see these pollutants with our own eyes, but the camera can. These devices together allow us to comprehend the air pollution in our own homes and perhaps understand some of the public health consequences as a result from breathing them in. The FLIR camera allows us to see the plume of gas as it rises from the stove and spreads throughout the kitchen, living room, and bedrooms in our homes. The FLIR camera uses optical gas imaging to visualize unburned hydrocarbons like methane, as well as other air toxics produced by burning fossil fuels. One example is benzene, which commonly comes from vehicle tailpipe emissions, as well as other sources like smoking cigarettes. It is known to cause blood cancer, especially within children, and some autoimmune disorders. The second thing to know about the FLIR camera is that it detects heat. When we film in high sensitivity mode, the camera shows us the heat from the combustion when methane is ignited by a spark or by a flame. This creates the heat used for cooking. In the process of burning methane, toxic air pollutants are released, including nitrogen dioxide, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, benzene, toluene, and xylene. These pollutants are byproducts of burning any fossil fuel, and each of them is known to cause harm to our health, especially our children's health. And even though the oven is off at this point, those are still all of this VOCs. With the aid of the camera, I was able to see this noxious plume that is dangerous. It's, it seems um, almost surreal. <laughs> you know, you, you'd think, Wow, look, I'm eating so healthy, but, you know, in the process of preparing that healthy food is also a health concern. I mean, when I first saw it, it did really did just look like my whole kitchen was on fire. And I think I was most surprised at how wide it's dispersed. It's not totally unexpected, though. I. When I walk up the stairs, I can smell the gas. I can smell the food that's cooked. It's not worth it to me to have my kids have chronic exposure to toxins. The FLIR camera footage from today was really shocking and kind of scary to look at. It's really hard to imagine that they're all there when you've never seen them like caught on footage before. So seeing it just made it more real and dangerous. In each house, we had two monitors. One we placed in the kitchen and the other we placed in the dining room. The kitchen appears as a solid black line while the dining room appears as a dashed purple tinted line. We started recording five minutes before we turned the gas on and ended recording five minutes after we turned off the gas stove. As we cooked, nitrogen dioxide levels rose. In this home, they reached red on the plume air quality index scale, which indicates unhealthy levels of nitrogen dioxide for anyone. Elderly, children, and people with pre-existing health conditions likely have trouble breathing, feel unwell, cough, wheeze, and risk longer-term health conditions. Even otherwise healthy people at this level may notice some symptoms like difficulty breathing, headaches, or lightheadedness. Our data shows that only three of 17 homes stayed at a healthy level of exposure to nitrogen dioxide. On the other hand, 82% of residences had unhealthy concentrations of nitrogen dioxide. In some cases, we offered residents an opportunity to place a third monitor in a location of their choice. Similar to kitchens and dining rooms, we found that unhealthy concentrations of nitrogen dioxide spread to living rooms, second floors, even third floors, but most importantly, bedrooms. 
Using the FLIR camera, we were able to visualize how effective the pollutants were captured through vents. When turning on vents installed under microwaves, which were the most common found in homes, we noticed that microwave vents were unsuccessful in capturing the fumes from the front burners. The microwave vents even struggled to capture fumes coming from the back burners. As you can see from the FLIR footage, this is concerning because most people use these front burners. As we are cooking, we are inhaling nitrogen dioxide, benzene, and other air toxics. So the question arises, should we continue to use gas stoves every time we cook a meal, knowing it impacts our health? Or should we move away from fossil fuel appliances? It's a valid argument to look at lead paint and you know lead pipes and asbestos. Um, those were pretty standard building materials for decades, you know, um, and they 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 served the purpose that they were originally meant for. But they were later found to be toxic and eventually have been banned. And um, that is that provides a very interesting paradox, you know. So in as much as we don't want our children eating lead paint, so we didn't allow anybody to use lead in paint. This is really important because now it's it's a a family health issue, particularly having a, a young child. How many people are dealing with asthmatic issues now? How many people are dealing with COPD? How many people are dealing with adverse health effects because of the way we live? And every generation seems to find a new thing that is detrimental to us, that we all believe is a fantastic, this is, look at this great innovation we have using gas to cook with, you know?